In the last lecture, we learned about numbers in JavaScript and some of its important methods. In this lecture, let's use that knowledge to create a very simple web application which will convert a decibel number into different number bases. So this is the web application which we are going to create in this lecture. Now this web page has a text box and a drop down list. Now a user can go ahead and enter some number inside this text box. So let's say the user enters 255. Then from this drop down list, he can select the base to which he want to convert this number to. So let's say the user want to convert this number 255 to its hexadecimal form. And then he can click on this convert button. And here he will see the result of that conversion. So here this number 255 has been converted to its hexadecimal form and it has been displayed here. And if you notice this result has been displayed in green color. In the same way if he selects binary then this number 255 should be displayed in its binary form as you can see here. And then if he selects octal then this number should be displayed in its octal form as you can see here. Okay. Now if the user enters some invalid number, let's say some alphanumeric number like this, in that case when he clicks on this convert button, he should get an error something like this. So please enter a valid number. And this error message should be displayed in red color. So while implementing the functionality for this web page, we are going to use the methods which we learned in our last lecture. Okay. So here's the HTML for this web page. Here we have a container div. So this container div it is displaying this gray section in this web page. Inside this container div, we have this h2 element. So it is displaying this header here inside this section. Then we have a text box. So this text box and we have a drop down list. And this drop down list has three options. So binary and its value is two, then hexadecimal and its value is set to 16 and then octal and its value is set to eight. Okay, then here we have a button. So this convert button and we also have a span here and inside this span we are displaying the converted value as well as the error message when a user enters an invalid number. Okay, so this is the HTML for this web page. Now let's go ahead and let's implement the logic for this web page for the functionality of this application. So let's go to script.js file. Now the first thing which I am going to do is I am going to access all these web page elements from this JavaScript code. So we want to access this text box, this drop down list, this button as well as this span where we are displaying the converted value and the error message. Okay. So for that, let's go ahead and let's create a variable. Let's call it txt number. Okay. And here we want to get access to this text box. So for that, let's use document dot get element by ID method. Okay. And to this, let's pass the ID of this text box. So the ID of the text box is text txt number. Let's copy this. Let's pass it here. So now we have access to this text box. In the same way, let's access this drop down list. So let's create a variable. Let's call it base drop down list. And again, let's use document dot get element by ID method. To this, let's pass the ID of this drop down list, which is base. So let's copy this. Let's pass it here. All right. Let's also access this convert button. So let's create a variable. Let's call it convert button. Again, let's use get element by ID method. And to this, let's pass the ID of the button. So the ID of the button is button convert. Okay. And finally, let's also access the span, the span element. So let's call it maybe span EL. And here, let's pass the ID of this span element. Okay. All right. So here we have access to all the web page elements which we need in this program. 
Now, the next thing which we want to do is we want to add an event listener on this convert button. So whenever this convert button will be clicked, we want to execute some logic. Okay, so on this convert button, that means on this variable, let's add an event listener. Okay, and this event listener should be listening to click event. And when this click event happens, we want to execute an event handler function. So the second argument of this add event listener method is this callback function. Now inside this function, when the user clicks on this convert button, so when he enters a number in this text box and when he selects a value from this drop, drop down and when he clicks on this convert button, we want to get those value, you know, the, those values entered inside this text box as well as the value selected inside this drop down. Okay, so let's create a variable. Let's call it num. And to this num variable, we want to assign the value which the user has entered inside this text box. So for that, on this variable txt number, which is storing this text box, let's call this value property. In the same way, let's create another variable. Let's call it base. And to this, we want to assign the value which the user has selected from this drop down. Okay, so this drop down we are storing it inside this base ddl you know variable so on this let's call this value property again okay now just to check we are getting the value let's go ahead and try to log it in the developer console so let's log num and base okay let's save the changes let's open developer console here So let's enter a number here, 255. Let's select a base, maybe hexadecimal. And let's click on convert button. So 255 and the base value 16 has been logged. So here, if you notice, inside this drop down list, the value for this, you know, this option hexadecimal is 16. And that's what has been logged here. Now these values are returned as a string, right? So here we are getting these values in the form of a string. But we need to convert those string values into its numeric type. Okay, so to convert a string value to a number type, we have several options. For example, we can use this number object or we can use this plus operator or we can also use pass int method. Okay, now here we are not going to use pass int method because we are not going to deal with alphanumeric values. So here to convert the string value which we will receive from this text box as well as from this drop down list let's use this plus operator okay so now these values should be converted to its numeric type and then it will be assigned to this number and base so currently if you notice these two values are logged in white color that means these are strings but now if i save the changes and now if i enter a number let's say 255 again and let's again select this hexadecimal and when i click on this convert button you can see these are logged in blue color uh, you know that means these are now numbers all right so let me close this console here so here we are getting the value entered by the user in the text box as well as the value selected from the drop down and then we are converting it to a number type and then we are assigning it to this num variable and this base variable respectively now Let's remove this console.log statement from here. Now, if the user enters an invalid number inside this input field, so let's say if he enters some alphanumeric value like this, in that case, this plus operator will not be able to convert that value to its numeric type, right? So in that case, this plus operator will return NAN and that will be stored in this num variable. Okay. So if user enters an invalid value in this text box, then this num variable will be assigned with the value NAN because in that case, this plus operator will not be able to convert that num convert that string value to its numeric form. And in that case, it will return NAN. And we can use this concept to write our if else statement. Okay, so if this number variable is storing NAN and we can check that by using is NAN method and to this we can pass this number variable okay so if this number variable is storing nan that means this is nan method will return true that means the user has entered an invalid number and what do we want to do in that case 
If the user has entered an invalid number, we want to show an error message in this span, right? And we are storing this span inside this span element variable. So let's copy this and here let's set the text content of this span. And let's say we want to show an error message saying that please enter a valid number. Okay. And we also want to display this error message in red color. So again, on this span EL, let's set the style and let's set the color property and let's set it to red. Okay. Let's save the changes and let's see if it is working. So let's go ahead and let's enter some invalid number. So let's say 255 AC. Let's select some, you know, a base here from this drop down and let's click on convert. And here you can see here the user has entered an invalid number. So we are getting this error message. Please enter a valid number. Let's refresh this page. Let's enter some valid number. So let's say 255. Let's select the base as binary and let's click on convert. So nothing is happening. So we are not getting any error message, but we are not also getting the result. That's because we have not implemented that logic. So let's go ahead and let's write the else part for this if statement. And inside this, let's write the logic to display the converted value. Okay. So here inside this num variable, we are getting the number which the user has entered in the text box. And inside the base variable, we are getting the value of the option which the user has selected from this drop down. So if the user selects, let's go to index.html. If the user selects binary, in that case, this value 2 will be returned and that will be assigned to this base variable. If the user selects hexadecimal, in that case, this value 16 will be assigned to this base variable. And in the same way, if the user selects octal, in that case, this value 8 will be assigned to this base variable. Okay, and then we are converting these string values. So currently these values are string values and we are converting it to a numeric value using this plus operator. All right. Now, in order to convert the decimal number into a given base, we have learned in our last lecture that we can use two string method. Right. So the number which is stored in this num variable, if we want to convert it to a given base on this, we can call two string method and to this two string method, we can pass the base number. OK, so for binary base number is two for hexadecimal, it is 16 and for octal, it is eight. And we are getting that value inside this base variable. Right. So let's pass this base variable to this two string method. All right, and this two string method will convert this number to this given base and it will return it as a string. Let's store it in a variable. Let's call it converted value. Okay, now we want to display this converted value inside this span. Okay, so we are accessing this span and we are storing it inside this span el variable. So here, let's set the text content of this span to this value, to this converted value. Okay. And we also want to display this converted value in green color. So let's copy this statement from here. And let's change this color to green. Okay. With this, let's save the changes. Let's enter a number. Let's say 255. And let's select binary. Let's click on convert. So this number 255 has been converted to its binary form and it is displayed in green color. Let's select maybe hexadecimal. Let's click on convert. So now it is converted to hexadecimal. If I select octal and click on convert, it is converted to its octal form. And if I enter an invalid number, in that case, if I click on this convert button, we are getting this error message. Okay, so this is working as expected. Now here, let's select this hexadecimal from here and let's click on this convert button. So here, when we are selecting this hexadecimal, the decimal number is getting converted to its hexadecimal form, but it is displayed in lowercase. But I want to display this, uh, you know, 
output this result into uppercase. So for that, on this converted value, let's also call to uppercase method. So to uppercase. Okay. And let's say we also want to display the result in bold. So for that, let's again call this style on this span element. Okay. And here we want to set the font weight. And let's set it to bold. Let's save the changes. Let's select, let's enter 255. Let's select hexadecimal. Let's click on convert. So now it is displayed in, uh, you know, uppercase and also it is in bold. Let's select binary, click on convert. So the binary form, octal convert, the octal form. And if I enter some invalid number and click on convert, then we are getting this error message. So now this web application is working as expected. So in this lecture, we used some of the methods which we talked about in our last lecture. For example, this to string method, this is an an, and also this plus operator to convert a string value to its numeric form. So I hope with this project, now you know where and when you can use the methods available on number type in JavaScript. This is all from this lecture. Thank you for listening and have a great day.